Hi, Matthew. Hi, Adam. I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. And I'm here in the United States in St. Louis, and Matthew is all the way across the pond in Wales, the <laughs> UK. Um, so thank you for joining me today. Uh, Matthew is actually the uh, founder of rosarylovers.com. And I wanted to bring him on to the show today just to talk a little bit more about his website, but also to talk about why we should love the rosary. And before we get started, let's just invite our Blessed Mother into this conversation. She's right here at my desk looking at me. And let's start with the Hail Mary. I'll say the first half and Matthew will finish. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. And my first question uh, for Matthew and what everyone is here to know is, why did you fall in love with the rosary? Let's hear a little bit about the story and why you decided it was an important enough part of your life to start a website about this rosary, about Our Lady's Psalter. Well, uh, this all starts really with me. I had a crisis of faith uh, back in 2020. Uh, I'd been struggling with it for months. And, you know, this was when the we had the lockdowns and the coronavirus pandemic. And I was looking after my son a lot. And I, I was, I, you know, I was really struggling with, with um, sinful addictions and just things that I, I knew deep down displeased God. And th those things were leading me away from Christ and leading me away from, from the church in my heart, really. And it just got to a crunch point where I just, I, ju I just ended up being so miserable and so unhappy and so unhappy with myself. And it, it, I, I got to a point where I, I really thought... This is, you know, I, I either leave the church and leave Christianity. This was in June 2020, or I embrace the whole church, everything she teaches, and, and give myself wholly to God. Uh, you know, I, I just came to see it really clearly. It's all or nothing. You know, if you don't obey the church and all these things that she teaches, about all her sexual ethics, for instance, but obviously everything else, if you don't obey the church holistically, or at least try to, then, then you you may as well just just turn away from it all because it, it is it's an all or nothing. Everything with the Catholic Church is teaching everything stands stands together, you know. And and like and and it's it's you can try to you can try to kind of deceive. I tried to dis, maybe deceive myself. I tried to like convince myself that oh no, you know you can pick and choose a bit. But actually, that had such a devastating impact on my soul. Um, I really, really wouldn't recommend that for anybody. And so, yeah, I, 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 what helped me to change in my heart were two prayers. <laughs> I stumbled upon uh, the consecration prayer to St. Joseph. And it's quite, it's quite a long prayer. But I prayed that and I prayed it meaningly from the heart. And I prayed it every night around about Vespers. And it wasn't long before real amazing changes started to happen like around me and in my soul and I know I and there was another prayer as well consecration to the divine will again I found that on the Laudati app and I prayed that as well alongside this Saint Joseph prayer again from the heart and when you pray prayers like that and do it every night <laughs> and do it from the heart it's you, you can't deceive yourself anymore and you can't deceive God anymore and and so I, I realized I, I don't know it just the way God was, it was God working as well, like bringing about these, these wonderful providential things to help me as well to obey. And, you know, God, God is so good like that. And yeah, I just came back with, with kind of like a vengeance as it were <laughs> to, to, to the faith and just, just lo loved being Catholic and just complete. I just, it was the first time I'd fallen in love with the Catholic faith. I'd been a convert for over a year at that point, but I'd really started now to fall in love with the faith. And then I stumbled across. So consecration prayers were like a huge thing for me. And another thing that helped bring me back and sort of save my faith was a five day novena to St. Therese, the child Jesus. I mean, I, I thought, what, you know, what have I got to lose? I didn't think it was going to work, frankly, but I thought I'll do it. And it was a very small prayer to St. Therese every day, along with five Our Fathers and five Hail Marys for five days. 
and that that's all it was it was so simple and for five days that's all like that's all i did for praying and and by about day four my faith just came back it was amazing i'd been struggling with doubts for over a year and it was it was really unpleasant but i've never i don't think i've had any doubts since doing that novena um so like and and, and then obviously praying these consecration prayers for after that, then I don't know how this happened. I stumbled across a website filled with consecration prayers to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I started praying these and they were absolutely electrifying. They just, uh, the, what, the, what they did to my soul. <laughs> uh, I, I, I prayed, there were ten, 10 of these prayers. And they're quite long. And I would pray three of them every day. And I did that for months <laughs> yeah. and the changes I, I, I came to know far more about Mary far. And I came to relate to her and have such a richer relationship than I ever could have done by reading whole reams of theology. Uh, it, absolutely amazing. These, these prayers just incredible. Um, and so, so I, I was led then to St. Louis de Montfort. I, I'd, I'd been reading about him anyway and reading his how he was saying that you know, the quickest way to access Christ is through his blessed mother, Mary. So I, I, I'd, be, I'd been reading about St. Louis de Montfort and I came across his consecration, the full blown consecration. I came across that and it's a 34 day consecration to Mary or to, to Jesus through Mary. I thought I'm going to do it. <laughs> I just, I it was, it was weird. It's the weirdest thing because I'd never really had this relationship with Mary before. And I, I kind of had never really had this relationship with, with the divine before, but I felt like, you know, God was so close and that Mary was leading me in all these ways. And I, I really think she led me to start this consecration. And so I thought, right, I'm going to pick the feast of the Immaculate Conception. That's going to be the day I'm going to consecrate myself. <laughs> that was the next feast day, see. So uh, all through November, I was I was praying these, and it's quite rigorous, you know, the Saint Louis de Montfort co uh, con consecration uh, schedule. So I did that, and I got got to the the final day, December eighth, formally consecrated myself to Mary. Joined up then with the Association of Mary, Queen of Queen of All Hearts, became a member there, and then kept coming across how praying the Rosary was the best way to con to live out your consecration to Mary. Now I hadn't really been praying the Rosary; I'd really just been doing consecration prayers to Mary, and that that was that was incredible. But I thought, if this if if saints like Saint Louis de Montfort and others are claiming this is the best way to live out your Marian consecration, then I should try and return to it really. So, so I did, I start, started, to, started to meditate on the mysteries and did, did quite a lot of research, reading different books on the rosary and how to pray it because I wanted to do it properly. And I started with just one a day. And actually, I used images. So that, that was really useful. I, I got an app on my phone, with, which brought up images of all the mysteries. And you can use, I used Google as well, you know, type in the crucifixion, loads of images come up, or the Annunciation, loads of images. So I'd be praying the Hail Mary, counting on my fingers, <laughs> just as yeah. I'm scrolling through all these images, you know. And, and it, I, like, the time would just go. You know, I barely even noticed the time because I'm focusing on these images. And it was real, you know, it was really good meditation. And I, I, that just helped me to just fall in love with the rosary. And I, I, I went from one to two rosaries a day um, because I just, I just wanted to really. And I was, at, I was actually praying a lot of uh, St. Bridget's rosary, which is or the Carmelite rosary, which is a, a little bit different to the Dominican one. But in the end, I decided to, to go with the Dominican one. And uh, so I was praying two a day. And, and that, that helped me a great deal in, in my life. And it was, it was very precious to me, but then, when, when as, as happens with life, sometimes you go through these really, really difficult situations and, oh my goodness, it just all came flooding in at once with us and we had a very hard time. And the only thing that kept me going was praying the rosary. And I, I increased my praying of the rosary to three rosaries a day. I thought, I, 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 was, watching a, I was watching a YouTube video of uh, Gabby After Hours, and that, that's, which I re really recommend. And, they they were they were having these testimonies of people who pray the entire rosary every day so four rosaries a day the uh, joyful mysteries the sorrowful mysteries the glorious mysteries and the luminous mysteries and they pray that and and i was just i watched this and i was hearing these testimonies and thinking oh my goodness i could just never do that ever yeah. i mean i could i could barely i was shattered praying like three a day and that's if i prayed three a day you know uh, th by the by the time i'd done the 
the 13th mystery. I just, I was ready to collapse, you know? <laughs> and this was mm-hmm. splitting it up during the day, you know, a decade here, a decade right. there, but still, I get to the 13th, oh my, you know, 13th mystery. I don't think I've got it in me to do the 14th or 15th. <laughs> yeah. So but look for, to do an extra one on top of that, I'm just thinking, oh my goodness. Anyway, I prayed to Mary. I, I, I remember I was in the bathroom and I just, okay, Mary, if it's what you want, I'll do it, but you're gonna have to give me the grace to do it. Uh, and, <laughs> and, Sure enough, within a very short time, uh, there I am praying three rosaries a day, the traditional rosary, the joyful, the sorrowful, and the glorious. And I'm thinking, that's good enough, isn't it? Because it's a traditional rosary. The luminous mysteries, they're kind of optional. It's okay. I still get the same power. Praying the traditional, I'm sorted, you know. But I was doing this for for maybe only a couple of weeks, and it was having a wonderful impact. It was plucking out, rooting out these Uh, addictions that I've still, or or sins that I was still struggling with, not so much addictions, just sins like, I remember anger in particular, and frustration, sometimes get an impatience, those things, oh, they used to really get me down, and I, I, how can I conquer these things? Praying two rosaries a day, I dealt with, dealt with uh, some things, but it wasn't, it didn't seem to be dealing with everything, and when I started praying three rosaries a day, this started to change. I started, it, it started to be much more rare that I'd lose my patience or that I'd get angry or frustrated. And I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is really doing something. So I was doing that for a while, uh, maybe not very long, two weeks or so. And, and it was really helping me as well, helping my mental health with the situation we were going through, which was a really, you know, it was a really hard situation. And that was keeping, that was keeping me going and not just keeping me going, it's sort of thriving really frankly, um, life was getting simpler. And I thought I got to the evening one night and I'd, I'd prayed the traditional, whole traditional rosary, finished the last glorious mystery. And I thought, um, I've got, I got more time here. I mean, I could throw in the final <laughs> rosary. <laughs> I could do the luminous mysteries. Uh, so I did. And I, I thought I'll, I'll just do that. The luminous mysteries, the church says you pray them on Thursday. So I, on Thursdays, I'll do, I'll do the four, but the other days I'll do the three rosaries. And uh, yeah, did, did, didn't last. I, I was, <laughs> I, eventually I was just praying all four every day sequentially for the Annunciation, lumin, uh, uh, joyful, luminous, sorrowful, glorious. And I've done that for months and months. And I just can't, I mean, it's impossible to describe what it does to you. Many, many of the saints, you know, they, they, all, they many of them became saints largely through reciting the entire rosary every day, you know, and back then it was the traditional rosary, just the, th- you know, just the three rosaries. St. Padre Pio, uh, you know, we all, we, many of us know about him, an incredible supernatural, really, really supernatural. I, 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 I you know, things, it makes your, um, you makes know, your brain hurt. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's about- I it's never knew that God, could, I mean, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? I never knew that God could do that through a human being, the kinds of things, you know, being in two places at once and appearing in the sky to protect pilots. And th- we, really, the weirdest things you can possibly imagine. I mean, more, fo- more, perhaps more incredible even than you see, see in the New Testament. But Pad- St. Padre Pio prayed 30, 40, sometimes 50 rosaries a day, which, I mean, t- 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 I, that, that's just... I, I don't even know how he did it. I know he was he was um, ha- had to stay in his room for a long time because he he was had his ministry restricted, so he had a lot of time to pray. But if I had all that time, I I I, I just just beyond me. Um, so and he he dedicated himself. He said to God when he was younger, uh, I I vow to pray at least five rosaries a day. Well, I mean, <laughs> we know how that turned out. Yeah, five turned into 30, 40, 50. So it's no wonder God used this man so much. You know, the, the saints they talk, like St. Louis de Montfort, uh, Saint, uh, other, other saints, like I think, obviously St. Dominic, all he ever did was preach the rosary. <laughs> um, they, they, they all say th- th- this sort of thing, that the, it's, it's the rosary. Th- this here, this is a, a great secret. I'm not going to say it's the only secret, and maybe some of them do say that, but I think just to, just to be in, in line with what the church officially teaches, the church doesn't mandate that we pray the rosary. It's no, no, no Catholic has to pray the rosary. I don't think a Catholic even has to pray a Hail Mary. You know, we, we don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. But the saints do say that this is a great way to to receive salvation. This is, this is like Pope Leo XIII says, this prayer, praying the rosary, th- there's, there's almost nothing else in the church that'll guarantee you getting saved. <laughs> Saint, Saint yeah. Louis de Montfort said, I, I, would, I would gladly sign in my blood the statement that if you continue to recite the rosary 
for the rest of your days, you will be saved. <laughs> you know, you you will net you will never fall away like fully from the church. You will you so. I mean, and I think something very important to, I guess, talk about then is also the idea that it's because the rosary then leads us to other graces. The rosary also leads us to fall more in love with, say, the Eucharist or the sacraments. The rosary is a, sometimes I'll refer to it as a gateway prayer to other prayers. And and right. that is the beauty of it. It's not that the rosary is higher than the Eucharist or more important, oh, but no that way. it will no. always lead our hearts to further sanctification. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I'm really glad you said that, Adam, because actually, yes, the, I mean, the church teaches obviously the, the Eucharist, the mass, it's the supreme prayer of the church. Mm -hmm. This is the sacrifice. This, this, is, this is the true worship of God. And actually, in that sense, if we're talking about the rosary in and of itself, it's, it's so infinitely inferior to the mass. No, no, nothing, nothing even comes close to the mass. It is the greatest prayer that the church offers. It's the greatest act of worship we offer. But um, I think if the, the, the rosary really, I suppose, it's a bit like the chaplet of divine mercy. Uh, it's an extension of the mass, if you like. Uh, so we can't separate the rosary from the mass. So, so long as we are mass attenders and, and, then, and pray in our rosaries, well, it, yeah, God will. God will hope and you and you know <laughs> and, and you have to know that it's the luminous mysteries that the fifth mystery is the institution of the eucharist yep. which the fruit of that mystery is greater devotion to the eucharist and to the oh, holy yeah. mass so yeah. there you go there's an example right there but i also wanted to pull out something you said earlier that mm -hmm. i found um struck a chord with me was that uh, prayer in general, whether it's consecration prayers to St. Joseph or uh, to another saint or um, consecration to our Blessed Mother or just the rosary, prayer does not allow us to deceive ourselves and does not allow us to lie to our Heavenly Father in our prayer. He will always see us fully for who we are. Um, and when we pray to him, we are being completely transparent, right? And it's not that he can't see it when we're outside of prayer, but it's that moment that we can fully, I guess, realize who we are in front of our Lord. Is that kind of why you feel like prayer um, and these consecrations affected you so much? You said it was through prayers that you had these realizations. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I, it was just the words of these prayers. These I, the thing I lo love so much about consecration prayers is they 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 were so they just went right. To, it was the bullseye, you know. Everything I needed to say, it was was in those prayers. I, there's there's no messing around at all with you. You can't you can't sort of fit oh but this for that. You can't. There's no space for kind of getting out of what those prayers say. And you've got if you're going to pray them, you obviously you've got to pray all of what they say but you know you, if, if you mean it then <laughs> if you mean it's again words, the concept the concept of all or nothing right yeah 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 absolutely yeah. <laughs> excellent well i think this has been an, a really awesome uh talk about just like how we can fall more in love with the rosary and the prayers and other prayers and use prayer to foster that relationship but really quick before we wrap it up <laughs> Would you mind telling uh, the viewers a little bit more about your website and how they can learn more about rosarylovers.com? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I I started rosarylovers.com because I, I started a few months ago because I, I got very interested in the online world. It's, it's something I've had a great interest in a long time. I, I started up a podcast. I, I've even started a website in the past, but it, they kind of not really taken off as such. I've not really known what I was doing. I was kind of doing things on my own. So I, I stumbled across a I stumbled across a, um, an advert when I was watching YouTube back in January. It was an advert for a company called Six Figure Mentors, and okay, I got involved with them for a little bit, and they really opened my eyes up to the online world and the power of the online world in in reaching people with with a message with products uh, which was what what they they were about really but i was thinking goodness i mean the way business works these days is is, is so different now that the internet's yeah. changed everything isn't it and i didn't end up staying but 
that they kept saying affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing. I thought, what's this affiliate marketing? Well, I I came across uh, as I was do, as I was doing more research into this, there was one company that keep kept getting uh, named, and that was the company Wealthy Affiliate. So I kept hearing about them, and I check I checked them out on Trustpilot because I thought, well, that's probably the best go to really because I I had no way really of knowing what they were about, and they had, they were really high on Trustpilot, some really really tremendous reviews. I thought, okay, right, okay, so they're obviously not a scam. <laughs> uh, so I I. And I heard that you could sign up for free, completely free, and stay a free member constantly, have a bit of training, set up a website, and then you can pay for higher memberships if you want to. So I thought, what have I got to lose? So I tried that, and I saw the community and that the help that's available, because a lot of these people have been very successful. And uh, just the, 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 the platform and the way you to create a website and the training it's I, I, well it wasn't long before I, I became a paid member <laughs> and uh, with my website I thought well what can I what can I do what what can I and it was a no-brainer you know I just I formed so in love with the rosary I thought that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do a website about Mary and I'm going to do a website about the rosary and I would love nothing more than just to spread uh, devotion to Mary and her rosary through that website and you know if I can make a bit of money out of it great but that's it's it's really it's really about uh, spreading the love spreading the love of christ through through his blessed mother really <laughs> well excellent i uh i i agree with my website my online business that the the money comes secondary right the first and foremost uh mission in our ministry is to obviously spread the beauty and the the truth of the rosary so um i'm very excited to be uh now i guess affiliated with rosarylovers.com bishop sheen rosaries is now uh we're featuring uh your website we'll send out the information and then also uh you'll hopefully feature some of our bishop sheen rosaries on your site as well so thank you uh to everyone for watching this video all the way through to uh to this point and we'll end with a quick glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Great talking to you, Matthew. Thanks a lot, Adam. God bless.